Hello, I'm Dr. Dan Johnson. I'm a professor of radiology at the Mayo Clinic in Scottsdale, Arizona. And I'm glad to be with you to share an interesting case of a 60 year old male who came to the medical center asymptomatic for routine colon cancer screening using CT colonography. On review of the images from the colonography exam, a thickened haustral fold that was somewhat irregular on its surface was identified with some surrounding contrast material, barium, from the uh, barium administered um, the night before for stool tagging. Notice the lesion is, uh, has fat, flat morphology. Using soft tissue windows, again, the lesion can be identified with a robust uh, barium cap on its surface. The lesion was uh, mentioned and colonoscopy was per performed for removal. And so they did remove this polyp and pathology. It was a sessile serrated adenoma. Serrated polyps are relatively uh, new pathological diagnoses. They're usually flat lesions as seen here, flesh colored uh, with a mucin cap on its surface. And in the past, these were all referred to as hyperplastic polyps. And hyperplastic polyps are still described today. They're usually in the rectosigmoid and small and benign. Traditional serrated adenomas can be anywhere. They have usual morphology and are more easily detected, but account for less than 10% of all of these lesions. The important actors are the sessile serrated polyps that are most commonly found in the right side of the colon. They're usually a flat morphology and account for about 20% of these lesions. In the past, we thought that nearly all colon cancers arose via the adenoma carcinoma pathway, where adenomatous polyps would undergo molecular changes to become a colorectal carcinoma. Today, we know that there's another pathway, the serrated carcinoma pathway, with different molecular changes that result in these sessile serrated polyps. And eventually uh, some of these will develop into uh, colon cancer. Let me just show you a few other lesions. Here's one that's relatively flat that has a barium cap. Another one that's small, flat, and has a barium, a little bit of barium on its surface that helps us identify these. So looking for that barium cap can be really a good tip off that you might have one of these lesions present. And it's the mucin on the surface of these lesions in which barium is adherent to. Here's another one you can see on the lung windows, um, a little bit more evident on the soft tissue windows where you see the lesion as well as its thick barium cap. Not all sessile serrated polyps have adherent barium, so you still have to be vigilant and look for these flat lesions um, as shown here by the arrows. And not all sessile serrated adenomas are flat. You can see a pedunculated one with the red arrow here. Um, you can again see it on this other view um, more of a typical appearing polyp. CT colonography is pretty good at detecting these lesions compared to colonoscopy. David Kim at the University of Wisconsin showed that in over uh, 8,000 patients, the overall prevalence was about 1.4%. Most of these lesions were large that they were finding over a centimeter. They were usually in the right colon and flat. And that compares favorably with a 1.2% prevalence rate at colonoscopy. So in summary, sessile serrated polyps are important. Um, they can lead to colon cancer. They're usually seen on the right side and are more difficult to detect because of their flat nature. One of the things that's helpful as radiologists is to look for that barium cap that adheres to the mucin surface of these lesions. So take a second look at the right side of the colon, look for these flat lesions, and if you see barium, be sure and look deep to that barium to see if there's an underlying polyp. Thank you very much.